All right, guys, so just a couple of days ago, I uploaded a new video around Adobe acquiring Figma. Now, since then, we've had over 20,000 viewers and we've also had over 200 comments left in the comment section below. Now, this is insane. I actually went ahead and read through all the comments and there is a very small portion of designers who left their comments that really supported or was quite neutral around the entire acquisition. They weren't too fussed about it. They said, if we have to pay, we have to pay. Figma's a great tool. We also use Adobe products. It's totally fine. Then the other sentiment around this whole acquisition was quite negative. And there were three key points. First, no more free Figma. Second, increased pricing. And third, Adobe creates bloated products. What the hell? So in this video, I wanna hopefully share my thoughts within two minutes for this two minute Tuesday video and maybe share a different perspective around things and maybe help you see this in not such a negative way. Good things are coming. So, no more free Figma. Now my father has always told me there is never, there's no free lunch in this world. If there is something free for you, some other person out there is actually paying for it. There is no free lunch. So you might've thought Facebook was free. Nah, it's all the advertisers out there who are really funding the actual party itself. So if you are a student or an educator that's using Figma for free, it's, yes, you might be using it for free, but there is another pro member out there, another organizational member out there who's actually paying for your license or it's actually the VC money, which is venture capital money, which in other words is investor money, that's paying for your server cost. So you have to understand, nothing is ever free, and if we want to continuously support products, great products, and we want them to continuously innovate and lead the market, it only makes sense to be paying for our services because that money is reinvested back into the company. So the second thing is around increased pricing. Now Dylan, here we go, Dylan mentioned in a tweet that there are currently no plans to change Figma pricing and will continue to be free for education. Now here's the thing, the key word there, think about it, what was the key word? Have a think about what is the key word here? Currently, right? So now to be honest, if you are using Figma professionally or plan to use it professionally in the future, it only makes sense for you to pay for such a great tool. Because let's just be realistic here. The fact that Dylan said currently, I don't think he can hold a strong case forever because it doesn't make sense for it to be free forever. Yes, maybe now because they're trying to grow the product, they're trying to support the community and do goodwill, but eventually as this product scales, things get more expensive, they need to hire more talent to grow the company, to grow the product, everything costs money. Which goes back to my point around that's why it's so important for us to be paying for services because it helps the company hire great talent to continuously build great products that we love so much. So according to what Dylan said, currently they don't plan to change the pricing, but in the future they might. Now what happens, right, in the future? So Dylan said currently they don't have plans, but in the future, no one knows what's going to happen, but let's say we had to go ahead and rethink the pricing strategy for Figma, right? And the worst case scenario is that Adobe pushes everyone into subscribing to the Creative Cloud and you had to purchase all the apps. You can't do an individual subscription, right? You can't just subscribe to Figma. Right now, that subscription is $79 AUD, which converted into USD is $53.80, right? So just keep that in mind, just keep that in mind. But if we can subscribe to individual products, that is $10 a month for XD. So with the price of XD right now and the price cap of all the apps, it's between 10 to $53.80. So if you think about it, that's probably where Figma could be priced in the future, right? We're just using with the data that we have right now. Now to put this pricing into perspective, if you actually take a look at Upwork, which is the probably leading freelancing marketplace for the entire world right now, they say that the average hourly rate for UI designers on Upwork is $20 to $40. So in worst case scenario, guys, let's, this is worst case. So if you were only charging $20 an hour and you had to subscribe to all the apps in the Adobe Creative Cloud, which will probably never actually happen, you have to work maybe two and a half hours a month, just a month, to cover the whole Figma cost. No, sorry, let me take that back. To cover the, all the apps in the Creative Cloud. Can you believe that? Two and a half hours an entire month to be able to access and use every single app 
in the Creative Cloud suite. Just let that sink in. Think about that. Imagine if you had to go and hire a developer to build out all these tools. That would cost you millions, but you get access to it for just two and a half hours, worst case scenario. Does that put things into perspective? Now, obviously that's worst case scenario. If we were to just subscribe to Figma in the future, anywhere between $10 to $53, you're working maybe one to two hours a month and you can cover the cost of Figma. So I think we need to really just understand that pricing isn't so bad in the future. Now, third point is around Adobe creates bloated products. Now, once again, I grew up util utilizing Adobe products and it really did help shape the early stages of my career. Now, to be fair, I wanna give credit where it's due. Now, here's a fact, whether you like it or not, most of the senior designers that you are learning from on YouTube, on Skillshare, on all these different platforms, including myself, we all used Adobe products early on in our career. So I think we have to give credit where it's due. Adobe did help us shape our careers and help us grow in this entire industry. So for us to really just throw a comment out and say Adobe is a terrible company, they don't do anything for the customers and just really share this negativity to the, towards them, I don't think it's fair because you are really learning from all these people who utilized and still utilize Adobe products as well. Now also, I wanna be clear, when we're talking about bloated products, I don't know what specific products we're talking about within the Adobe suite, but let's say we're talking about Photoshop, Illustrator, Premiere Pro. Let's just remember, none of these products are actually built for product designers, and it was never intended to be used for web design, product design, UI design. Designers like us, UX designers, product designers, and UI designers just utilized these tools and then expected them to work. That's not how the world works. These tools weren't designed for us at the beginning. It's utilized for graphic design, for editing images, hence the name Photoshop. So I think we need to understand and take a step back and not let our emotions get ahead of ourselves. These products weren't designed for us. Now, if we take a look at another product done by Adobe that product designers actually use, which is XD, there is a huge fan base behind XD and a lot of people actually like XD. So to be fair and to give credit where it's due, I think it's important for us to really just recognize that Adobe, if they really did want to, they can build a meaningful product. Not to say that XD was better than Figma or Figma's better than XD. XD alone is a pretty decent tool and a lot of designers actually use it. So let's be fair with our comments and maybe take a step back sometimes and think about this entire topic as a whole. Now, once again, I love Figma, but I also don't have anything against Adobe. Adobe did help shape the early days of my career. I still use Premiere Pro, Adobe Premiere Pro to edit this video. Now, most importantly, I think I understand that tools are just tools. They don't really determine your value as a designer. There is so much more beyond just Figma that really determines your value as a designer. For example, being able to think strategically, being able to communicate your design ideas clearly, being able to talk to customers and understand what are real problems, what are their needs, what are their wants, and then being able to creatively think about solutions that you can deliver to your clients and to the business and to your employer. There is just so much more beyond Figma itself that really does determine your value as a designer. So hopefully this two minute video that's gone way beyond two minutes helps give maybe a little bit more of a positive view on this entire matter. Now, no one knows what will happen in the future. It doesn't really matter. Let's just put our heads down, keep designing, keep the good vibes going. I'll see you guys in another video very soon.